welcome back. This is Rachel with the Book Babins, and I have a special unboxing to do with you guys today. Uh, the Zodiac Academy books came in this morning, and I'm very excited to share those with you. Um, Bookish Fox did some interesting things uh, with, um, with this particular special edition book set. Uh, some really great things and some things that I, I might have chosen to do uh, a little differently, but I do want to talk that out with you today. Uh, and I apologize for my very nasally voice. Um, I'm still recovering from the flu, so uh, this is, yeah. <laughs> so I'm here, ready. I'm feeling better. I'm just draining. The sinuses are draining, so I'm very, very nasally. So I apologize if my voice sounds super funky today. All right. So I did take uh, the books out of the box. Uh, they were packaged very well. Uh, That's one of the things that I wanted to um, mention about this, something that Bookish Box is doing that I really, really appreciate. But the first thing I want to show you is the little bonus that came with the uh, first four books for the Zodiac Academy. Uh, they sent one of those uh, bookshelf silhouettes. It's really cute. So it's the ZA for Zodiac Academy to display with the books. I think these are really cute. I think they're a nice little detail to put on your shelf. Um, I have one that's, I think it's, oh, uh, which one is it? They have several available on their site or they did at one point in time. Uh, I have one for Stocky Jack the Ripper that's like a skull with roses that I actually display with my Kingdom of the Wicked books, but that's a whole other story. Um, so let's see. So here we have all four books in their felt bags. Now here's the thing about how they packaged it this time um, that I really like. I Now see, I have never personally had an issue with my bookish box uh, books coming damaged. I've never had a damaged book. So I always thought that the felt bags were plenty of protection and they, and to me, the felt bags are definitely thicker than those thin bags that Alumicrate and Fairy Loot use. And I've had damaged books with Fairy Loot and Alumicrate. So <clears throat> I always thought that they were ahead of the game anyway with just the felt bags, but they packaged these books and like those bubble book mailer bags. So it's bubble wrapped and sealed. And then they were bubble wrapped and sealed inside the felt bags. So I'm really glad that I actually unboxed them off camera because it was a struggle <laughs> to get them out. So these books, <coughs> there are zero crushed edges. There are no scratches. There are no friction points, nothing. These books came in pristine. So I was really happy about that. I, I figure for these, um, maybe not so much for the... Uh, like the monthly books, but for their special edition sets, I absolutely think that they should just go ahead and package their books this way. But not just bookish box, all of the book boxes need to be packaging their books in that bubble wrap, that it's keeping everything still around the book so there's nothing rubbing. That's my big issue that I have with Fairy Little Liver Crate is that they sit for a long time and they're just with friction, just wearing spots out on the books that irritates the crap out of me and then the quarters are getting damaged too because they're shoving them around and those like uh bubble mailer bags really protect the quarters so these books they came i mean beautiful there's no rub spots there's nothing so i i really commend bookish box for packaging their books so well i wish the rest of these companies would get on it because they would save themselves a lot of money i would think you know what do i know but um, to not have to send out books, you know, that they could just put them on sale for their, you know, yearly sales to get rid of extra stuff instead of having to constantly send out damaged or to replace damaged books. I mean, it seems like a no brainer to me, especially for the really special edition sets, which I think is a, a, a big reason why a lot of people do the subscription boxes. And it's not really about the subscription monthly bo books that come in. It's about the access to special editions. Uh, sets and things like that that come that come out throughout the year like Zodiac Academy so who knows that's just my two cents about the whole thing um, but I really wish that they would package their books better and Bookish Box really knocked it out of the park this time so I was very happy about that let's see these don't feel like they're in order anymore they kind of go like the first one's the smallest and they just get progressively bigger so I wanted to be able to start with the first one Okay, 
So this is the first one. So here we have the cover. So we have Darcy and Tori here on the front. Uh, it's very pretty. I mean, I I love the sides. You're going to see that the spines come together to form a design that I really like. And then it has a quote on the back. Welcome to your awakening. It's time for the stars to rouse your inner power. So if you were unfamiliar with the Zodiac Academy books, it's about these twin girls who had no idea that they're heir to anything. Um, they uh, find out, oh, it turns out that they're Faye. Ooh. And uh, somebody comes and gets them. And they were in poverty. They were in, I mean, their life was not pleasant in the human realm. So they get taken away to the Zodiac Academy, which is a school. It has elements of high school, but also elements of college. It's kind of this weird, they borrow a lot. And so these are, these are, these are classified as kind of a bully fantasy romance situation. Um, the bullying is very intense in the first couple of books. Um, however, when the girls really start to fight back, uh, they become far more enjoyable to read. Now, I have a video, you can search for it if you'd like, uh, where I reviewed the Zodiac Academy books. I have read one through seven. The eighth book is not out yet. And I think there's going to be nine books total for this series. Um, so <laughs> we will <coughs> we'll see how they, <laughs> sorry, how they wrap it up. But these are pure like junk food books. There's no real substance to that. There's, they're full of plot holes. Um, there are characters in here that I just hate. There's one character, Geraldine Gruss, that I love. She's the only reason, honestly, that I'm still invested in this series. But I did read them. I did enjoy them. Would I go back and reread them? Maybe. Like, piece it around. Like, if I was just looking for, like, a palate cleanser or something that wasn't going to, like, kill my brain, then, yeah, sure. Why not? You know, but I would not, I would not classify these as, uh, good books, but they are fun reads. So if you're looking for something just kind of silly and hokey and uh, perhaps not the best written, but still a good, you know, fun ride, these are the books for you. All right, so let's go back to this cover art. So the cover art's beautiful. I I think it's really nice. They did the uh, the cutaway, so it does have a reverse jacket. So they're just kind of like in silhouette. I'll show you here with those. I do like the reverse jacket. If they had done the spine art, um, I would be tempted actually to turn them around. But um, I do like this because it does line up to form a, form a picture. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to take, to take the jackets off because the um, there's really beautiful character art on the end pages. So I want you guys to be able to see that. All right. So here it is naked. It's very pretty. You know, it's kind of boring, but like there's no title out here. So you wouldn't want to really display them naked, but it's pretty foily. But look at the uh, character on the inside. So here we have uh, Darcy and Tori, our main characters throughout the book. Um, and then their first two friends that they make at Zodiac Academy. All right, Diego and Sophia. Sorry, it's been a while since I've read them. I have to refresh. And then you see that the um, edges are sprayed. They're kind of like this gray and it has this ombre yellow on the top. Um, and then there are um, astrological um, designs, <coughs> symbols, sorry, <coughs> excuse me, that are here. Um, there was a design choice that I made and I'll show you, I'll line up all four so you can see why there's this why they overlapped on the tree. I don't know why they did that. They should have brought the tree line down to have it across the sky. That's a common complaint a lot of people had. So I don't love that they did that, but honestly, it's so dark <coughs> in general that, um, <coughs> sorry about um, that. I had to just go hack out a lug. It's fine. <coughs> uh, anyway, so I will show you all of the spines lined up, but they did it so dark that you lose a lot of the detail. They should have done the background in like a lighter gray or really brought that tree line down for more of a color differentiation, but they didn't do that. And that's fine. It's whatever. Like I said, I do actually prefer the, um, the design actually that's on the main spine. So I'm not mad about it. I just kind of like an eye roll, you know, you should have just brought that tree line down, but, um, I'm not going to like fight anybody over it. 
So uh, let's take a look at the second book. <coughs> All right. So here we have uh, the Vega Twins again. Um, I, while I think that the art itself is really, really beautiful, I did not need these girls on every cover of the book. Of, of like every book like it just did it there's going to be nine books in this series I don't want them just posing as they are together just the two of them on every single cover but that's what they did for the first four that is the biggest issue I have with these books there's a lot of like you can see with the character art on the inside why they didn't feature like other characters I I mean, that was a decision. I, I don't love that decision. But I'm not going to be displaying them out. They're going to be displayed with their spines, and I'll show you. So you can see that they have different designs. So this is the book naked. This is the reverse jacket. You can see. So it's just the front design, but just kind of a silhouette instead. Um, like I said, the art's beautiful, and then you can see on the spine. So you can see that they're going to come together, they're going to form all of these really cool pictures with the creatures, because most of the fae in here have this kind of alternate form, which is pretty cool. Alright, so you can see on the sprayed edges, so you see the tree line came down a little bit. So that's where they probably should have started the first one and had the tree line go down, but they didn't do that. It is what it is. But... I think the coolest things are really the uh, character art they did on the end pages. So they should have had these guys, like the first book, I get it, show the Vega Twins. I mean, it, they that is where it starts. But the second book, why didn't you feature some of the dudes? Like, they're a big part of the book. They also get their own perspective chapters. So it's not like they're not in the book. Like, they're there. Like, they're very present. They're definitely um, a big part of the story, obviously. So, um... I do think they, they should have switched up the cover art. We should have had somebody else besides the twins on the covers. All right, so let's look at book number three. So once again, the Vega twins, I mean, they're always in different outfits. So I guess we have that to look forward to, but I don't, honestly, they're not why I, why I read the books. So uh, I guess it's just selfish that I just, I just don't relate to them very much. I actually find them both quite annoying in different ways. But it's the sock characters that I really like and I really would have liked to have seen them featured more. So you can see here. So down there is the Cerberus. Now the Cerberus, that's my Geraldine Groose. That's her other form and she's my favorite. She's my favorite character and she's featured here. So like I would have loved to have seen them, you know, just do more. They just should have done more. So here we have Weibel. He's the big baddie of the series. And Xavier, he's the younger brother of Darius, the guy who turns into a dragon. Darius to me is the funniest of all of the characters. Only because you were supposed to take him very seriously, but like his whole thing is because he's a dragon shifter. <laughs> that he values gold like he gets like he recharges his power from being around gold so he just like lays in big piles of gold and, and like jewels and stuff like a like an actual dragon but like as a human that it wraps chains around himself it's just is so silly <laughs> i just giggle about it all right let's see and the final one of the four so they are going to release, I think, five through eight, although now that they swung out that they're doing a ninth book, that's relatively new information. I don't know what they're going to do with that, but anyway, so here are the Mega Sisters again. So you can see there's a really cool Pegasus up at the top. All right. And a reverse jacket. And you can see the foiling designs. This one's actually quite pretty. They just should have put the uh, names of the books. I don't like it when they don't put the names of the books. Or there needs to be some kind of cohesive design. And none of these designs are cohesive. So, you know, it is what it is. So you can see the, the skyline went way down. It looks better this way. 
it's still very dark. Um, I get it's supposed to be a night sky, but you could maybe could have done these in the blue. I don't know. I don't know. I don't love the sprayed edges just because I don't. Um, it just didn't, didn't get me that excited. Oh, let me show you the, sorry, I forgot to show you guys the end papers. So here you can see the twins again in their alternate form. So I'm not going to tell you what they are. You can take a guess if you'd like. And then Darius and Orion. It's the first time seeing Orion in the fourth book for a character, which I think is very surprising because he's actually a very central character through all of the books. Since he's a romantic interest for one of the sisters. So anyway, there's all of them over here and lined up for you to be able to see them together. Oh, they're heavy. All right. So here you can see the spine design. So absolutely, I will be displaying them this way. I think that they look the best this way. Um, I love that you actually get some other character representation here, which I really appreciate. And I think they're going to look really beautiful on the shelf, just like that. So um, anyway, overall, I'm pleased with them. I wish that they had done different character art. I think they redeemed themselves slightly with the beautiful end papers with all of the character art. I just wish that they had moved that <clears throat> on the covers as well. They could have done a really beautiful job featuring them and then featuring scenes with them and other characters in the end paper art. You know, there are some decisions that I just, I would have made different ones and it's fine for the design of the books. Overall, I'm very pleased with them. I'm very happy that I'll be out in just a minute, baby. <laughs> Can't stand it. Can't find me. Ollie, I'll be out in just a minute. Go play. That, um, anyway, the quality is very nice. I didn't see any issues. I flipped through them. I didn't see any loose pages. Um, it is signed. The first book is signed by the author. Authors. Sorry, there's two women who write them. The other ones are digital. But, um, always something happening in this house. So anyway, let me know what you thought about these, what you thought about the design choices, the books, whatever. It's all up for discussion. So I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.